If I'd have to consider myself a castrato, it's because I sing music of today for the audience of today, just like the castrati. So, and I do it in a sort of, um, uh, not just flamboyant, because I don't think all castrati were flamboyant. Um, some of, we, we know that some of them were quite uh, diva and quite bitchy and quite extraordinary in the way they presented themselves on stage. But I think that there must have been a, a more quiet soul to all of them. But I certainly, uh, like the castrati, uh, bring music of, the, of my time to the people of my time. When I look up there, I see people who relate to what I sing. I sing uh, music and lyrics that, uh, that are, uh, represent the tensions of today, of, my, of the 21st century. So I am a castrato in that respect. Also because as a castrato, um, I'm not literally castrated, but as a castrato, I, I, I face people with, with these um, uh, prob with the horror, the beauty, the, the monstrosity, the, the traumas, the, 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 fun, the marvels, everything of this era. Um, so yes, I'm a castrato in that sense, if I, if I am one. Julie Andrews did, didn't just stop there. She, she didn't just help me as a child to find my identity. She didn't just take me by the hand when I was 14 and was in search of our, of, of our personality. <laughs> and she also came to help me somehow years later because um, in 1997 she um, had a problem on her vocal cords. She uh, had an operation which was botched and she lost her fabled singing voice, which was a huge tragedy for her, for her fans, for herself, for, for, for the world, because it was one of the most beautiful voices of the 20th century. But through this, uh, she in later years worked and works with Dr. Zeitl in California, who is experimenting on a new gel, on a new material, which uh, someday, if injected on the vocal cords, can restore them to the perfection of the youth. So even, even somebody who, has, who hasn't got a problem, who is in his 80s, gets the in, in injection and can have his, the voice of his youth back. This is the project. It's, it's quite scientific. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's happening. It will happen. And Julie Andrews will be apparently the first human being on which this technique will be employed. And who knows, maybe, will this gel be able to recreate the voice of the castrati? maybe not on a human being, can, but can they, because this gel, if you see it now, you can see it on YouTube, it vibrates and it makes a sound and, you know, it's already there. So maybe if separated, can we somehow build a contraption that can give us the voice of the castrati? Hmm. Um, so that's that. So now the, the, the counter tenor and the thing. Um, okay. Somehow I think that what happened to the male high voice is a bit what happened to me uh, when I was a, a child and then a boy. There's a kind of similarity there because um, after the castrato's, the, the death of the castrato tradition, well, let's remind ourselves the last castrato died in 1922. Alessandro Moreschi was the last relic of this wonderful tradition. Um, after that there was a sort of um, an easy feeling towards the male high voice, they sort of disappeared. Um, not so much in the Anglican church. You would find um, falsettist and countertenors that, that kept on going in, in, in that tradition. Um, but certainly in Italy, uh, the, the, the wound of the castrati still opened for the Italians. That tradition completely disappeared. There, there was nothing. But all over the world, there was a, there, there was a bit forgotten until um, probably was it the 50s, I think, that uh, um, the tradition started to creep back in with a composer like Britton and a singer like Alfred Della, who was um, the first countertenor of the, of the, of the first popular countertenor, I would say, who reintroduced this uh, by singing old repertoire and Britton by composing um, new repertoire for, for this particular voice. And so, uh, in England particularly, the countertenor voice, bit by bit, bit by bit, gained, in the classical world, gained uh, notoriety and, and, and exposure. Until the last, um, the very latest, uh, burst onto the scene of the, of the contemporary countertenors. And it's a very 
uh, recent phenomenon, I would say the last 20 years really, particularly the 90s, I would say. And uh, in the pop world, alongside, there was also a, a rebirth of this type of voice. Uh, well, a, a birth, really, because there, there had never been any pop music before. But you know, the, the pop idiom, I think, I'm not sure, but via maybe gospel music, where you have, uh, in the gospel choir, there, there is always the, the high-pitched voice along the, alongside the many others. So, uh, some singers, particularly in, uh, well, from the 50s onwards, but um, big time in the 60s and 70s, they found that this high-pitched voice had a sort of um, quality that could be groundbreaking, that could be um, a punch in the face of the establishment somehow. So, my, the, the name that comes to my mind right now is Sylvester, who in the 70s, um, made of, used disco music as a sort of um, uh, rebelling against, uh, against the establishment. His appearance was very, uh, almost like a, um, a transvestite, well, a transvestite really would wear makeup and, and uh, flamboyant costumes and his mannerism he, he was quite effeminate and, uh, and he sang in a, in a high voice. So, uh, and many singers after that, they picked on it. Uh, Jimmy Somerville, I, he used it as a, as a gay statement, full, fully fledged and uh, with uh, very explicit um, music videos in which he was a gay, a gay man. And uh, so his voice, in a, in a subtle way though, I think uh, he, he, his voice was used in a subtle way. So, you know, in the 20th century, you have uh, the latter part of the 20th century, you have th these two uh, m users of the falsetto voice in the classical world to regain, to, 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 to re-own the castrati repertoire. Today many countertenors are, are playing the role of the castrati uh, in operas that have not been uh, um, performed since the, the premiere even, or very seldom, or the, the roles that have been played by women for many, many years. Now countertenors are reclaiming. There's the whole thing, I mean, a, a countertenor voice will never replace the one of the castrato because that was a completely different sound, obviously. But at least we can enjoy the opera with the sort of uh, se the, the gender displacement because you, you still see a man singing in a high-pitched voice. Might not be the, the boyish quality of a castrato, but uh, certainly you get that ambiguity which is, a, which, which is different when a woman plays the, those roles. We, we, women have been playing them the castrato roles for many, many years. Um, so there is this new addition. And then you have the pop world where this voice is used in many, many different ways. I mean, people like Anthony uh, Egerthy, uh, I certainly plays with the idea of uh, a transgender and, uh, and a high-pitched voice. He also uses lower tones, but he goes beyond gender. And uh, I'm not sure whether I do that, to be honest, because I just do I, as I said before, I do any, I do everything. I do, I use all voices, and also depending on my project, I use the voice that goes well with that project. But maybe some people say that they see that in what I do. I'm not particularly um, behind it. So I'm, I think I, I'd, I'd like to think that I do more than just uh, the gender thing. Well, after 20 years in London performing, and um, a few in Italy before moving to London, I, um, well, yes, I have a perspective on both the Italian way of perceiving certain things and the English one. I mean, I, I hate to generalize and categorize, but you can for, for fun, for a bit. I mean, I would say because the, the countertenor tradition is actually, I think it, 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 it comes out of England from the Anglican Church, where it was never a problem really, actually, it, it was used very much. So the, the English were used to it a lot more than the Italians. And even today, I, I think there is a lot more... Um, the, the, the Northern European uh, audiences are much more open towards, towards a countertenor or, or a high, male high voice. Not so much uh, in Italy. Who knows, is it the castrati uh, shame that is still in the back of the, of the, of the my, of the DNA? <laughs> I don't know. But certainly there is more resistance and there is more the freak... Uh, the, the reaction to the freak element in Italy. Um, not, so, not, not as much as maybe uh, 10 years ago, but still. And um, I don't know whether, how much countertenors work in Italy um, on the opera stage. 
they certainly work a lot in Northern Europe and in America. Um, I hear from friends that they are not booked as much in Italy. I don't work as much in Italy as I work all, um, in the rest of the world. I don't know whether it's got anything to do with it. Maybe funding <laughs> and uh, the, the way the arts are treated in Italy has got a lot more to do with, with it. Um, um, but um, yes, certainly there is a different attitude towards the male high voice in the northern European, uh, in northern Europe than there is in Mediterranean countries and in Italy particularly. Naughty Italians. Okay, okay. Stop. Cool. Perfect.